I'm Dudley Brown. I'm leader of two gun rights organizations, Rocky Mountain Gunners in Colorado and the National Association for Gun Rights. I was elected as a delegate from Colorado and also elected to the Rules Committee to the 2012 Republican National Convention. Uh, I arrived about a week before the convention started to meet for the Rules Committee uh, where Governor Sununu was chairman and didn't think much would happen there, thought it would be um, pro forma changes, but uh, District of Columbia Rules Committee member Ben Ginsburg, who's an attorney and uh, kind of the establishment's go-to guy, uh, started running a series of amendments that took everybody by surprise in that committee, and including Morton Blackwell, a longtime Virginia uh, delegate and national committee man, and and people who've been involved in the grassroots conservative movements all around the country were kind of wide-eyed as we watched these, these real broad rule changes happen. Um, those changes were meant to silence grassroots conservatives. Make no question about it. It wasn't against one presidential campaign. It wasn't against, um, against one person. It was against broad groups of conservatives being involved. And it was a power grab by the Washington elite and the RNC muckety-mucks who, frankly, um, poked a sharp stick in the eye of conservative activists here. I mean, they had already won the nomination. We knew that, that Romney had already won the nomination. Yet his people went and aggressively tried to make a rule change. It was their attack um, who started all this. And, of course, grassroots rose up. Um, in opposition. Now, during that committee fight, we tried many times to run amendments, and most of the time we lost those rules fights by about 10 to 12 votes. Um, and we realized that we weren't going to defeat it in the Rules Committee, and that was on a Friday before the convention. And so that whole weekend, we, all of us were, who were in opposition to these two big rule changes went out and aggressively worked uh, to try and defeat them. Now, a compromise was offered to the Rule 15-16, and let me explain that. Originally, Ben Ginsburg and the establishment wanted presidential campaigns to have veto power to disavow a duly elected delegate from a state. What that would have meant was that unless you were a big donor to that particular candidate um, or a big wig within the party, they would just disavow you. You would have to be really good friends with the consultant from that particular state, for instance, in Colorado's case, you'd have to be good friends with the Romney main consultants and shakers and movers, or they'd toss you out and disavow you as a, as a delegate, even though you were elected by your peers and activists within the party. Um, they might even sell those positions, literally only giving those positions to the biggest donors within the party. Now, uh, Rule 12 is a little more insidious. That allows the RNC to make rules in between conventions. So that four years lag um, that stops presidential campaigns from essentially writing their own rules and, and driving the entire process um, now is circumvented. Uh, they can make those rule changes uh, within the RNC in between the convention. It kind of pushes all the delegates out of positions of authority and, and again, mutes the grassroots. Um, now, um, could they make those changes in between? Yes, there's a high mark. In other words, three quarters vote of the RNC, but, but <laughs> usually the chairman of the party gets whatever they want. And if there's a Republican president, they always get what they want within the RNC. So that's not really a high mark um, to achieve. Yes, there was a compromise offered the night before the convention actually started. And that compromise removed the disavow language and now makes it so that a bound delegate has to vote for that particular candidate. In other words, if you ran for a certain uh, candidate's position as a committed delegate, you'd have to vote for them on the first go around, regardless of what your state laws say. Now, in my particular state in Colorado, that was already the case. We had to vote for those people with whom we'd committed, and I was an uncommitted delegate. I think what this rule change will do, though, is it's a top-down um, change that tells every state what they must do. And it'll change all states um, to all fit within this category. Now, 
many states have different rules, and I think those should be different. States could be different and are different. The delegations are different. Um, they're elected in a different manner. And that, I think that's the beauty of the process, unlike the Democrats, who everything's done from the top down. Now, this power grab was not by accident. And it was opposed by grassroots activists and organizations around the country. My organization, National Association for Gun Rights, Freedom Works. Um, I heard that uh, Michelle Malkin and her blogs, that uh, Sarah Palin, Michelle Bachman, a great number of conservative activists, candidates, former candidates, um, talk show hosts all talked about this power grab. And I got inundated by, by phone calls from people saying oppose those rule changes. I led the fight in the rules committee against these changes and on the floor. And we fought our hardest. But on Tuesday, the, when the convention started, the rules committee got together. Now, we knew that some of the members weren't there. Um, Morton Blackwell, notably, wasn't there. And the reason was his bus mysteriously circled the convention four times, um, stalling him from getting to the Rules Committee meeting. Now, Morton already had plans to speak against these rule changes, but couldn't because he wasn't there. Uh, many people think this was intentional by the RNC. I don't know for certain, but it sure sounds like it to me. Um, there were some antics even within the Rules Committee. We took standing votes and lost on those rule changes, um, but right after we were circulating minority reports and an older lady behind me from North Dakota um, had the original minority report for Rule 15-16. And, and I heard her say, give that back, and a piece of paper being torn from her hands, and I turned around right behind me, um, a delegate from Massachusetts by the name of DeVito. Apparently now I find out he's, he's actually legal counsel for the RNC there, or, or in Massachusetts anyway. Mr. DeVito, uh, who's a younger man, um, was holding these minority report signatures and holding them away from uh, this lady from North Dakota and using his other arm to kind of push her away. And he had this smile on his face for everybody in the room. He was displaying that he was willing to go to, to any length um, to do whatever the establishment wanted him to do. And clearly that was the case, including um, um, stealing papers from a little old lady. And, uh, um, and essentially using one arm to block her. I don't know if he actually pushed her. Sure looked like it to me, um, but it happened very quickly. Well, where I come from, I don't care what side of the aisle you're on on any fight. Um, young men don't push little old ladies and steal papers from them. Well, when I saw that the sergeant in arms wasn't going to do anything, um, he was just saying, settle down, settle down. Um, I jumped over the chair into the row behind me. Uh, I grabbed Mr. DeVito by his uh, collar and pulled the papers out of his hands and uh, pushed him back a few chairs and uh, told him that's not what we do where I come from. We don't treat little old ladies like that. Now, I come to find out that um, that lady from North Dakota actually is a state senator, Margaret City, and her husband came the next night and thanked me for defending his wife. Um, but I think any red-blooded, real American would have done exactly the same thing. Um, but it shows you to what great lengths they were willing to go to make these rule changes. It made no sense to me, though. Um, they were angering a significant portion of the grassroots um, by doing this. And to this day, I get tons of people who are furious at the RNC and the Romney campaign for doing it. Um, they probably should be. I am. I thought this was a power play that should not have been done, and certainly not that convention. Understand that Rom Mitt Romney won under the rules that exist. And then they tried to change him. It's a try way to kind of remove all the future candidates for president, except the presumptive nominee, um, from being able to speak, being a part of the, the process. And I think the process ha should have some integrity. Tuesday, when um, Governor Sununu gave the rules report to the entire convention on the floor, uh, and then Speaker of the House, John Boehner, uh, got up and, and uh, took the chair and said that, um, heard the motion to approve the rules, the yeas were very, very muted, very small, almost no one, and the nays were quite loud. 
and uh, Speaker Boehner immediately ruled that, in the opinion of the chair, the, the eyes have it. Now we come to find out later that it was scripted and on a teleprompter that Speaker Boehner was being told <laughs> and scripted that the eyes have it. In other words, uh, they knew what they wanted. They wanted these rules and it didn't matter what the voice vote was. Uh, now, you don't have to tell the Speaker of the House what the procedure is and what to say in those circumstances, um, but it was telling that they had scripted that portion out, even the decision. Um, what we do know is that whenever there's a voice vote, it's, there's only one vote that really counts, and that's the, the person who's in the chair. And we knew he'd rule against us. Um, however, um, we tried very hard to get that vote to a roll call vote on the floor. And uh, unfortunately, due to the strong arm tactics of uh, the Romney campaign and the establishment, who um, greatly despised the grassroots conservative movement, This should make conservative activists even more motivated to change the Republican Party. If you're a conservative activist, you should know that um, it's only in your activism within your local parties, within campaigns, with um, third party organizations, interest groups um, who believe in very specific issues, that you can make changes within the party. As an individual, frankly, it's very, very difficult lone wolfing it. Um, large groups of people are tough to ignore though, even for the RNC. And um, um, you should know that a lot of those establishments just simply aren't on our side. Um, they want our votes, they want our money, uh, but they don't actually care about our issues. Um, we have to force them to care about our issues. Uh, and the only way to do it is um, to, ha to work hard within, uh, uh, within groups of people and um, we're going to keep working at changing these rules as well as, uh, as pushing our agenda. Of course, I, I lobby very hard for the Second Amendment and we, our platform is very strongly pro-gun within the Republican Party. I think the Dem Party is uh, hopeless if you look at their platform. Uh, however, um, um, I want grassroots gun owners to be involved in this process and to force them to make changes to the process, um, whether they like it or not.